Can you share? Oh, perfect, Bob. Okay, okay. so I just uh, close right now. So okay. when I start present, then I mm -hmm. can share this one, okay? Okay, thank you, Prof. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can you hear me, my voice, Rob Nam? Yeah. Okay. Uh, may I have your attention, please? Our class is about to begin. Uh, thank you very much for preparing yourself to join our international class. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Anyong hasil, Prof. First and foremost, uh, we would like to thank to the Professor Nam Jong Oh for allocating the time and to attend and want to share his expertise in this international class. It's a great honor to welcome you, Prof. Uh, this international class in collaboration with COSA, Koika Scholarship Alumni. Uh, thank you so much to COSA Chairwoman. I see here we have a COSA chairwoman and supported by OPT, Prof. Ocean Power Technology. Thank you so much to OPT Asia Pacific Representative. All participants, my name is Marezo Alpatoni Putasa, the host of today's class. I'm very pleased to see you here and welcome everyone to this class. Uh, before we start, uh, the class. I want to invite the participant to watch uh, the video from OPT. Uh, OPT is a pioneer in ocean energy technology. Have a look at it.
Okay, thank you. Now we come to the lecture session, Bioeconomic in Fishery Science, delivered by Professor Nam Jong Oh. Uh, professor Nam Jong Oh is a professor in Department of Resource and Environmental Economics, Graduate School of Pukyong National University, Korea. He finished his doctoral degree uh, in 2007. Denny, can you share the, the floor? Okay, he finished his doctoral degree in 2007 uh, at Graduate School of University of Rhode Island, USA. I will share. Maybe then you have a problem. Okay. Uh, he has many achieve achievements in the field of research, including some international paper and got some best paper award from Fisheries Business Administration, Society of Korea, Ministerial Commendation, and many more. Now, we would like to invite Professor Nam Jong Oh, distinguished uh, professor, to give the lecture about bioeconomic uh, in fisheries science. Professor? Uh, yeah. professor. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you again, Professor Ori Maniyeo. <laughs> uh, professor, uh, for the information, uh, the number of participants uh, is one, 100 uh, mm -hmm. participants, but mm -hmm. we can see here uh, already in 21, 21 mm -hmm. uh, and the participants come from not only from Indonesia, mm -hmm. I see from the registration. Mm -hmm. uh, but also from other country. I see from Philippines and other and some uh, Africa countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Professor. Mm -hmm. Now uh, maybe you have a uh, one hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. uh, you can divide it into two session. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe with one time breaks or mm -hmm. not. You can uh, directly one and. 30 hour, uh, one hour and 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Maybe after the lecture, we have a Q and a question and answer mm -hmm. uh, about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Professor, uh, the mm -hmm. time is your now. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much for introducing me. And also, I'm so interested in, 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 in this kind of approach to meet all of you because it is one of the challenges of uh, connect each other by using Zoom. So I'm so happy to see and also all of you. So I know as Mario is my, uh, my student so in Pugyong National University uh, related with the COICA program. So uh, I really uh, thank you for inviting me. So, and also uh, some of us students already knew when I see it's your names or your uh, figures in the Zoom. So thank you very much for uh, come in this Zoom. Uh, also right now, so I'm going to explain my economics in fisheries science. Uh, first of all, time, time is very short. I just wonder how can I explain all of things uh, bioeconomics <laughs> Just in you know, two hours, uh, it is not yeah. uh, possible. That's enough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to briefly explain uh, what is uh, bioeconomics, and also I just to show you one of the example of uh, my papers, and then so if you are interested in some area or some uh, department in the world, then I'm going to introduce this kind of uh, department. So. Uh, and also when I uh, explain that this kind of uh, uh, lectures, uh, uh, please feel free to ask to me if you have any questions or uh, any wondering something then it is possible. So, because uh, I don't want to explain all of uh, fisheries bioeconomics because uh, I cannot do that. But just I wanna give uh, some motivations why you uh, need to study bioeconomic models in your countries. And also, uh, if you uh, approach this kind of methodology, what kind of material you have to have? And also, 
uh, if you're interested in some department in the advanced countries, then I just introduced this department. Maybe this is my role of uh, uh, these presentations. Anyway, so first of all, I'm going to explain what is bioeconomics just briefly. And then I just uh, give uh, some examples of fisheries economics papers. Then if you have any question, then I wanna give uh, some answers. And also my time is, uh, I think around uh, uh, one hour and then five minute break and then around the 45. So maybe uh, uh, in my opinion is around the, uh, in Korean times, uh, around the 12 o'clock, then I just uh, break just a five minute. And then maybe 45 minutes, I'm going to uh, present again. This is better to me, right? Marejo, can okay, I Okay, thank that? you, Sprop. Uh, you can break two, into two sessions. Okay, it's, okay. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm going to show my presentation, PPT. Okay, so I'm just gonna give why we need to uh, study uh, stock assessment or bioeconomic models. First of all, so we have to think uh, how can we sustainably use uh, our fisheries resource? This is a uh, uh, big issue or hot issue in the world. Nowadays, uh, uh, fisheries resource in the world so were already our fishing. So this means that even though we really want to catch some more species, uh, however, so it, it is not easy to catch this. Uh, why? So uh, fisheries resources are already our fishing. So this means that a uh, human, we have to continuously, sustainably use uh, this fisheries resource. So nowadays, uh, fisheries technology is uh, so advanced. Uh, if we catch all of uh, fishery resources in the world, it just uh, seven days is enough by using human technology. So uh, in the nationally, we have to uh, consider how can we uh, continuously or sustainably use, even though we have uh, Good technology. So this is uh, one of the uh, big issues. So and also uh, around uh, 200 years ago, uh, humans thought even though we use or even though we catch a lot of species, but uh, fishery resources are renewable. So we don't consider this kind of uh, worry things. But we already uh, 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 evidence of uh, uh, depleted species in your country or in our countries. So uh, fisheries resource economics uh, is uh, focused on how to control of fisheries resource. This is very important. So uh, around uh, 1945 or 1946, uh, 19, uh, uh, 1960s, uh, you, maybe you know, uh, uh, Scott Gordon, he is a mathematician in the Brit uh, British Columbia. So he thought, how can he continuously use the resource? Then we have to sort surplus production is very important. This means that uh, fishery resources are renewable. So if fisheries resource is gross, some part of them then 
just human, just using the surplus part of them. So this is uh, uh, some kind of uh, intuitions of uh, bioeconomics. So I really love this uh, uh, concepts. Uh, I mean, the surplus of production method or surplus of production model is, uh, I very love this kind of approach because, uh, you know, so, uh, in view of economics, uh, economic is uh, already winners. We just uh, using small effort, then we get the, the maximum profits, right? This is efficiency, right? So uh, uh, economic concept is efficiency. However, however, bioeconomic is not goal of efficiency. Our goal is to sustainably use resources. So why? We have to consider next generations. So if we don't consider next generation, maybe our fisheries resource is exhausted in the last term. So uh, bioeconomic is just a warm, uh, I think is a warm, uh, uh, studying areas. So it's not course because we have to consider last generations. So then uh, in my view is uh, bioeconomic is very warm studying areas. So I really love these approaches. So it just so uh, below the figure is uh, right now is uh, mommy wears is giving birth to some baby wears. So human only considers that the uh, volume of uh, uh, wear of uh, uh, baby uh, wears, this is we say just a surplus. So human only use uh, this small surplus, then maybe it's a resource going to be continuously used for next generations. So this is uh, one of uh, my uh, Scott's intuitions, Gordon's, uh, Scott Gordon's intuitions. So this information is very important. So then in the lectures, uh, usually when I started the resource economics class, I just show these two figures. Left side is biological area, is the right side is economic areas. So if you see uh, left side, biological area means that uh, fish species or a species can live by itself in the ecosystem. So human didn't uh, come into this biological area, then ecosystem can make a balance by using natality or mortality of uh, species. So uh, why human involved in biological area? Because human really wants to get profits. profit. Human is what? Economic persons. So we have to consider, uh, I'm also economist. So when you use fisheries resource, we usually consider how much, how much can I get some money? So this is human's uh, thought. However, if resources are already gone, then human cannot get any profit. So in this means that human should consider uh, how do we continuously use a fisheries resource? This is a very uh, important concept. So if you share, Right side is economic areas. However, left uh, area is what? Left area is in fisheries resource. But fisheries resource is what? Common resources. This means that everybody can catch these common resources. There is no exclusive rights. So human can compete each other to catch these fisheries or resources. So we have to think about this one. So uh, however, in the right side, if you see economic areas, uh, we have to catch it, right? By using what? Fishing tools. So a bus or a boat or uh, other instrument. 
And also, if you buy fishing efforts such as Brussels or boat or canoe or some instrument, then we have to pay money. This is, uh, we say, cost, right? So by using this cost, uh, we can buy some Brussels fishing effort, then uh, we can catch its fisheries resources. Then uh, based on this resource, we can get some revenue, right? Then we have to compare two of them, revenue and cost. Then if you revenue is greater than cost, then we can get uh, money. But cost is greater than revenue, then we lose money. However, uh, there is no, there is no uh, regulations in the fisheries resource because the common pool resource or common resource or common pool, right? So because of this reason, government controls this uh, resource. So if it didn't government controls this fisheries resource, maybe fisheries resource market can be what? Payer. We say this is a market payer. So in the fisheries area, government should embark and should control the fisheries resource. So we say government control is very important in the fisheries economies. So usually in the uh, uh, in the view in a view of economics, you know it's right. Uh, market system is what automatically used, right? Supply and uh, uh, de uh, demand. So in this supply demand function is not what considers government into being. However, in the fisheries economics, we have to think government how to control uh, these fisheries resources. This is very important. If the government didn't control them, it can be market payer. So uh, I know so many of the uh, participants are, 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 are already Republic officials related with the fisheries area. So you have to consider how do we consider uh, fisheries resources or how do we control fisheries resources by using fisheries management or fisheries uh, regulations or fisheries instrument or et cetera. I, I saw uh, uh, before uh, my presentations, uh, OPT video is very interested in this part of that. So nowadays, many countries, they already use this kind of uh, personal monitoring systems. So in the America, they also have this kind of uh, monitoring systems. They every time, so every seconds, they check all of uh, their fishing uh, boat or ships in the port. So then they are controls all of it. So uh, Marizo shows this OPT video is uh, very inter interested. So maybe uh, nowadays we already have uh, uh, economic exclusive zone, right? Every country has these EEG zones. Then by using this uh, OPT uh, uh, program, then maybe it's it can be easy to monitor other countries' ship in your uh, uh, fishing area, right? Then if you detect this kind of behavior, then maybe your government uh, keep a, a cost card to protect other countries' ship, right? So this is a, one of the good controls. So this is, we say, governance is very important in the fisheries economics. Okay. So then, so before I show some figure, if I just change this figure, if I just change uh, mathematics into this figure, then we can see this uh, mathematic uh, uh, figures, okay? So before just I say this is a biological area, I just gave you here figure, right? Figure. But I just change this mathematic tools, then it is exactly the same. So by using uh, our birth rate or by using death rate, uh, we can 
ecosystem can control balance of uh, their fisheries resources. So why uh, fishery resource uh, has gross functions? How can you relate it with the gross function with the natality and mortality? If natality is greater than mortality, then maybe gross is positive. However, mortality is greater than natality, then their gross is zero, right? There is no minus gross, just a zero. This means that resource is not existed. So, so uh, I just show these uh, equations. D dx divided by dt means that gross rate. Gross rate is equal to birth rate minus death rate. We say just to change the natality time biomass minus mortality times biomass, then we can get AX. A is intrinsic growth rate. So intrinsic growth rate is uh, means that individual species has their own growth rate. So we say this is intrinsic growth rate. So AX is intrinsic growth rate. But I didn't mention that here's environmental limitations. If we have environment limitation, then our growth rate hx equal to ax one minus x or uh, k over x. So this means that what? If k is carrying capacity, means that the maximum resource in the given environment situations, then kx is what? Just a biomass, right? Then if X can be K then X over K, uh, K over X is what? Just uh, one. Then one minus one is zero. This means that growth is zero. So one minus K over X means that we say this is uh, environmental limitations. So before I mentioned in the figures, uh, ecosystem can be controls, but natality and mortality. So here's in the mathematic tools, they just show if gross rate is a positive value, then natality is greater than mortality within given environment situations. So we can write these equations. Then right side is economic area is we say uh, humans are piecing production models. Usually, uh, our catch is related with uh, Q, F, X. Y is, uh, we say, productions. And Q is catchability coefficient, and F is piecing effort. X is uh, biomass. So catchability coefficient means that what? what? This is uh, uh, catching technology. So if we use uh, uh, per se net, then maybe it's a person that can catch uh, more uh, species rather than if you use uh, uh, gillet fishery. The gillet fishery is just using individual hook, right? But uh, person is just to use rounding net. So in the uh, uh, high group, uh, high, uh, 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 in the superficial areas, this means that uh, high immigrated species, then uh, person that is can get lots of species. So by using high technique of fishing effort. So at that time, there's catchability coefficient is very high. But if you just use canoe or just a boat, even though they catch some species, their catchability coefficient is very low. So at that time, you are using catchability coefficient means that technology of a ca uh, catching species. And also, F is our fishing effort. Fishing effort means that how many uh, go to sea, we say days of sea, and also how many number of uh, uh, fishing boat, this also fishing effort, or how much 
do you have uh, 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 there's there's gears or tones in the shape? Then this is also one of piecing tools. So piecing effort. So piecing effort though, has several things. Days at C and also how many screws nets, also number of percent, number of tons, or number of uh, 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 first powers, etc. So anyways, uh, if you catch some species, this is production is related with catchability coefficient and also uh, piecing effort. Also, we have considered one of them. This is what? Volume of biomass. So if to our country is stuck, is very in, uh, abundant, then even though you just uh, use a small piecing apple, to, then we can catch is more product. But uh, in our countries, stock level is very low. Then even though we use more advanced piecing effort, then uh, our catch level is very low. Why? The level of stock is very important to get product. So this production is function of uh, catchability coefficient and piecing effort and the level of stocks. So we say this is a production functions of a fishery. So then uh, before I mentioned the Gordon, Scott Gordon's intuition, right? So I mentioned that xt plus one equal xt plus ht minus yt. Here's ht is, uh, we say surplus productions. Surplus production means that uh, xt can give birth there's baby by using their own growth rate. So uh, resource can automatically product their stock. So we say this is uh, their own growth. We say this is a surplus. So human only catches this surplus part of them, then next year's there's a level of stock can be xt plus one equals xt. Why? Human only use their gross ht. So our production is yt, there's gross part is ht, then there's own uh, there's uh, original resource is still existed. So we say this is XT. So then next year can be there's biomass also, biomass is also XT. So we say XT plus one equal XT plus HT minus YT. Here's human only catches HT. Then next year HT, XT plus one equals XT. This is what? sustainable concepts or equilibrium concepts. So by using this equilibrium concept, then uh, we're gonna, uh, if I already showed this one, right? We're gonna uh, get this kind of complicated uh, uh, dimensions. Maybe uh, many of the students already took my courses, uh, they knew these figures, but uh, some of the students, uh, if you see this one, it is very complicated, right? So, <laughs> and I uh, was in class in the, usually in the beginning of class, uh, if I sh show this kind of figure, then uh, all of the students uh, had, uh, uh, what, what's this? They're so complicated. So how can I uh, explain this kind of thing? Something like that. There's uh, uh, response is very weird. Anyway, in my view. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to uh, repeatedly explain these figures in my classes. So uh, in these times, I cannot explain all of them, but this, in, uh, this figure is uh, synthesized uh, what is a picture is uh, uh, economics. So I just uh, briefly show these figures. So it's just that this figure is complicated and uh, this figure is uh, is not understand if someone see this figure in first time. However, this figure included several intuitions or implications in the fisheries economics. So 
uh, when I um, was in class, then I'm going to explain from number one through number 10. So if I explain this one, I have to spend at least uh, one hour. So <laughs> in just a two hours is not enough. But important issue is uh, based on this concept, we have to find what is maximum sustainable yield and also what is the maximum economic yield and also what is open access yield. We have to figure out this kind of a point in the figure then we have to adopt this figure in your fisheries area or your fisheries circumstance. So this is a stock assessment. So uh, uh, if you just briefly explain, here's number four. Number four through particular actually is Y, right? So then you can see Y, M, S, Y. Here's Y, M, S, Y. This Y, M, S, Y is uh, okay. Okay, here. Okay, here. Hmm. Sorry, here Y M S Y is we say maximum sustainable yield, and also here Y M U I is uh, 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 production at the maximum economic yield situations. YOA is uh, open access yield. So when uh, this piecing effort, for example, apple, MUI piecing effort is small. However, their profit is the maximum. And then there's production is uh, less than MSY. App MSY is their piecing effort is greater than effort of uh, maximum economic yield. However, there's a profit is uh, lower than profit of a maximum economic yield. However, there's production is greater than maximum economic yield. So this concept is kind of this one. So uh, humans behavior is first of all, they focus on maximum profit. So even though they using small piecing effort, and then even though they get uh, small productions, however, if they get the maximum profit, then that is enough. That is enough. So, but biological concepts, biologists, they focus on every year they can get maximum sustainable yield. But economic concepts, economists, uh, they consider even though you're using small piecing effort. If you get more product, then it is enough. So those uh, two views are different. So if you are a biologist, then you're focused on maximum sustainable yield. If you are economist, then uh, they are focused on maximum economic yield. So in my view, usually I'm focused on maximum economic yield. Why? So maximum economic yield production is less than maximum sustainable yield. Then in the next years or next futures, there's resource gonna be more increased. So before I mentioned that fisheries economics what one starting area, why we are considering next generations. So even though we use, even though we can catch more productions, but we just endure, why? For next generations. So fisheries uh, resource economics has this kind of uh, uh, mind is very important. So I say warm starting areas. So when I was in Sapomar in uh, our university, Pugang National Universities, when I, uh, took this fisheries resource economics, then I was so shocked. Why? So I, when I, at the time I just uh, uh, studied economics, but one of the professor, you know, maybe Professor Sangori, 
He is a uh, chief of uh, Fisheries World Fisheries University uh, before. So, anyways, uh, he at that time he was my professor. So uh, he taught fisheries research economics. At that time, my age is around uh, 21 years old. So then I took this class and then he taught this kind of uh, approach. So then I just uh, got my visions. I'm gonna study fisheries research economics rather than economics. Even the economics get more what, income, I don't consider. So fisheries research economy is what, very warm starting areas. Uh, if I can uh, uh, make uh, some good uh, fisheries regulations or fisheries management then, maybe next generation can share the current fisheries resource. That is enough to me. So I took this class and then I got my business. Okay, then I, I'm also uh, 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 entered into Bukyong National uh, uh, University of Rhode Island in USA because Professor Sangori, he's my elder student in uh, University of Rhode Island. So I, uh, I had uh, some impressions uh, uh, to the Professor Sangori. So then my vision is totally changed. So in this concept is uh, make uh, me to uh, professors. Okay, so this is very, impressive when I uh, teaching this kind of concept. Anyway, so uh, just uh, I just give you this kind of concept is enough because time is very short. So then, see this is more complicated, right? So why I show in the each point we have uh, what equations, right? And so based on this equation is you just saw this is just uh, what? Just uh, notations, right? When you see this figure, you can see some number or character, etc. Just maybe you can see this is kind of uh, notations or figures. However, in my see this figure, maybe my view is totally different. My view is by even though I see this figure, I saw also what fisheries uh, circumstance as well. With the viewing this figure, I can see Korean fisheries situation as well. So this is my uh, special areas, right? So just I'm going to show this figure, but I just see Korean fisheries situations, especially Korean fisheries resource situations or circumstance, I can see that. So by using those kind of notations or figures or uh, uh, some kind of lines or etc. Anyway, when I see this figure, then I can uh, diagonalize Korean fisheries resource situations. So this is very important figures. If you take my courses or if you know this concept, then maybe uh, you also can uh, interpreted something by using these figures. So I just uh, want to give you this kind of uh, uh, short comment. This is, I think it's enough. Just I'm going to explain one of the examples. Before I mentioned that, even though I just see this figure, then I can see the Korean fisheries situation, right? So I just explain why. So let's say, whatever in the, your markets, your wife, go to the market and then your wife uh, wants to catch it and uh, wants to buy beep. Why? Beep is a uh, little bit expensive in South Korea uh, rather than uh, fishing. So usually Korean uh, young generation like or love uh, beep steak. So uh, your wife really wants to buy beep in the market to give uh, this beep, beep to your uh, children's. So they uh, go to the, this uh, market. When you buy this beef, beef price is so high. Beef price is so high. 
so then your rifle cannot buy this one because of <coughs> sorry. If you buy this people, I cannot buy the other vegetable or rice or etc. So uh, your rifle is unwilling to buy what macro frozen macro. Do you know what I mean? So then maybe if a beef prices goes up, then maybe macros demand gonna be increased, right? So this is a substitute effect in the market. In, this is not fisheries area, right? So beef prices goes up is just a what? Agricultural part of them. However, agricultural part of them can affect to what? Fisheries area. So if beef prices goes up, then macro demand gonna be increased. So I mentioned that here, if you see these figures, maybe you can see blue line is D new, right? So demand curve is here, black line is demand curve. And then you can see is blue line is demand curve, right? This is demand is increased, why? People prices goes up, then human uh, can change it. There's a, a purchasing pattern. And then macular demand gonna be increased. Based on macular demand increase, then what happens? Frozen macular prices goes up, right? Demand is goes up, then maybe supply also uh, goes up, right? However, producers uh, can get more profit. So they're gonna uh, cause up their price of uh, macular. So macular prices goes up. So we say original macular price is P, here's P O A. And then uh, because in increase of, of price of uh, beef, because of these regions, macular price also goes up, okay? Then what happens? Then there's a total revenue curve also gonna be increased. Why? Even though their production is the same, prices goes up, then total revenue gonna be goes up. Why? Total revenue is uh, production times price. So prices increase, then there's total revenue gonna be increased. So there's a total revenue is, original total revenue is black, and then new total revenue is blue curve. So the total revenue is increased, okay? And in the open access markets, uh, open access market, there is open access means that there is no regulation, there is no rules, then everybody can catch it, Species. So this means that what I cannot exclude the others persons or uh, enter into this fisheries area. So they're gonna get zero until open access fishing effort of open access. I can say here maybe is uh, blue dot line is new a fishing effort of open access. So there's fishing effort is more increased. Why, why? Macular prices goes up. Then revenue is increased. Fishermen, they go to see more time to get more species. If they cut more species, then they bring this species into market macular prices goes up, they can get more benefit. So they're gonna try this one. However, what is problems? Even though they can catch more species, however, if stock is not enough, then even the fishing effort is increased, however, there's production gonna be goes up, goes down. So here, uh, if you see is uh, Y vertical axis, uh, original line is open access catchy is uh, uh, black dot lines parallel. However, a new fishing production is bold blue dot line 
parallel, then there's a production gonna be goes down. Okay, so what happens? I, I just to see this figure, then I can figure out. Okay, in the your countries, your country is not sophisticated fisheries management tools. Your country's fishery regulation is almost close to open access situation. This means that there is no regulations. Then if fish prices goes up, then what happens? My intuition is that your country's fishery resource gonna be reduced and reduced and reduced. Do you know what I mean? Why? Fishermen, they saw in the markets, macro prices goes up. Then they gonna go to see several times to catch species, right? to get more profits. Then what happens? They're using more piecing effort. Based on these reasons, your country's resource is gonna be depleted. So when I see this figure, then I can interpret it in Korean fisheries situation as well. Okay? So uh, this figure is so powerful to figure out your country's fisheries situations. So I just gave you one of the examples in the open access market. What about the other uh, four examples? Uh, uh, just to say, in, in, the, in the fisheries area is usually in the fisheries area, okay? Usually, usually in the fishery implemented, is implemented uh, in individual transferable quota systems. This individual transferable quota system is the market-oriented fisheries management. So then what happens? If uh, macular prices goes up, then what happens? Then still there's revenue increase, but even though their fishing effort is increased, but still there remains their resources. Why? They didn't overfish the fishing resources. In the market-oriented fisheries management, management means that they are using small resources, why? To protect fishery resources for next generations. So because of these reasons, even though they are using a little bit more fishing effort, but still they are space of fisheries resources. So then there's profit is goes up, and then there's production also goes up, something like that. So depending on fisheries management regulations, uh, even though uh, same market signals demand of increase, that your implication is totally different. Okay, so what kind of fisheries management to, tool you have? Then if market has some uh, impulse or some uh, attack of uh, price, then uh, you have to what, guess or you, you have to forecast what happens in your country's uh, situations. So you are what public officials, right? So you every time what is passing to what market changes. Sometimes your popular fishing, your popular species prices goes up, then you have to think what happens in our country's fisheries market. And then in our country's fisheries resources and in our country's fisheries effort, such as uh, uh, fishermen's situations. So you have to, so, so think you have to think about this kind of uh, what link and link link situations as well. Okay, this is very important intuitions. So uh, uh, when I teach is this uh, classes, uh, just I gave you some what uh, technically or uh, mathematically or the econometrics. Uh, tools, I just give you this one. And then many of the students uh, you just technically understand 
how can I estimate it MSY, MUY, open access, something like that. However, uh, what is more important? This is very, very important. Even though you don't know so how can I estimate it MSY, okay? So this kind of intuition is uh, uh, you have to improve uh, your ability to see your country's situations or to diagnose your fisheries situations. So I just gave you one of the examples to you, okay? So I just spent around uh, 50 minutes. So before I close, the, before I just make break time, five minutes, if you have any question, please feel free to ask to me. Do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you, Prof. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the participant, do you have uh, any comment or question? Or we finish, uh, we, you you want to ask after the uh, second uh, second session, yeah? Hmm. Maybe okay. we, we have to break, Prof. Uh, in five minutes, okay, maybe sure. uh, you can continue. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe we into mm -hmm. the uh, Q&A and uh, okay. uh, Q&A. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so just a five minute break and then I come back. Okay. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm.
<clears throat> okay, so uh, maybe many of the students come into this room, so I'll start uh, explaining in my uh, explain my presentation again. So, okay. Oh, sorry. There is some problem. I don't know why. Mm. Okay, so I just briefly explain uh, how can you estimate MSY, MUI, open access, etc. So, uh, it just this is some procedures of stock assessment in fisheries science. So, first of all, if you estimate the maximum sustainable, sustainable yield or maximum economic yield, uh, first of all, we have to correct the data. So, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Rob, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. your uh, your PPT is still uh, uh, two layer, Rob. Maybe you can change into uh, switch into only one uh, okay, okay. screen share. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'll try again. Yeah. Can you see? Uh, still, still, uh, uh, yeah, two layer two. This one Can is four. That? Yeah, okay, okay, but it's okay. Can you see that? Uh, still, uh, yeah, for for the speaker, this one, Rob. Whatever right now is okay. But it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you can continue. Okay, so uh, if you see this. Uh, how can you uh, make how how can you estimate the maximum sustainable yield or maximum economic yield in your fisheries uh, uh, situations? So, for example, so when you really want to know how many species in the sea, such as uh, uh, mackerel, then in your countries within your area, you have to estimate the how many macular in the sea. How can you estimate the this, right? This is magic, right? So maybe you are God, then you can count all of that. However, you are not just, you are not gods, we are just the humans. So, however, uh, based on uh, econometrics or based on statistics, we can estimate the some number of uh, buzzer, a number of uh, species in the sea based on what significant level of uh, uh, percentage in statics. So first of all, if you correct some effort data, or catch data, or uh, price or cost data, then uh, you can estimate it. Uh, a certain species of uh, uh, number of uh, certain species of uh, total amount of uh, weight in the sea. So first of all, we have to have at least uh, 15 years time series data of uh, catchy and also effort you, you need to have this one. So means that if you go to your statistic office, maybe you can get macular annual data, right? So macular annual data. So then if you correct at least 15 years old macular annual data, just you have to, just you have it this one then. And also you have to correct, collect annual, uh, piecing cost of bus cell or piecing cost of piecing day or piecing cost of uh, 
first powers, um, this means that annual your pissing cost of uh, buses or uh, pissing days or uh, first powers or uh, tons of uh, buses, you have it this way. Then by using two of them, then you can estimate the MSY. And also if you have uh, uh, Meclus price or your target species price and also uh, cost, cost, then uh, you can estimate it MEY. So biolog biologically, you have to have, uh, uh, first of all, you have to have uh, production data and also piecing effort data. Then you can estimate the MSY. I mean that if you have at least 15 years of uh, your macular productions and uh, macular production coated by your piecing effort, 15 years piecing effort, then you can estimate it. MSY. And also if you have a, a cost of per bus cell and also price per species, just uh, less than three years data is enough. Then you can estimate the maximum economic yield, MUI. Okay, so data correction is very important to estimate that this result. And also if you have uh, this data, then we have to use a surplus production method. Uh, in the class, I gave you around six surplus production methods. So you know, Sheffield method or Fox method or WH method or effort averaging method, or Snow method, or CRP method, etc. So I'm going to, I already gave you this kind of uh, surplus production methods in your uh, classes. So if you have, uh, six kinds of method then uh, you can estimate the, your MSY of individual surplus product method. Then uh, based on statistic result, you can choose one of a model among six surplus methods, okay? Then uh, by using this one, we can estimate the MSY. And then uh, if you, Correct, collect cost or price then, by using those of them then, we can estimate the what? Maximum economic yield. How can you get this one? So I just briefly shows this one, number one, two, three, number one, two, four, seven, something like that. And you see it's in the figures, uh, if you check the number four, number four is we say sustainable yield, top of point of sustainable yield, okay? So this top of curve, if you find FMSY, how should you do that? So differentiated SY curve with respect to piecing effort goes to zero, then you can find FMSY, okay? So by using this condition, you can estimate the FMSY. Then if you find FMSY, then we're going to value FMS value uh, substitute into sustainable yield curve, then we can find the YMSY. What is YMSY? YMSY means the maximum sustainable yield. So I mean that uh, after we get sustainable yield curve, then the maximum point is top of a curve, right? Number four then we differentiated the sustainable yield with respect to piecing effort goes to zero, then we can find FMSY. FMSY is what? Parallel axis, the middle of a point here is FMSY. Then uh, based on this point, just this point, uh, we say substitute this point into su su sustainable yield curve, then we can find YMSY this kind of concept. Then second, how can you estimate the maximum economic yield? Here, maximum economic yield point is a seven, right? The sustainable total revenue is a blue curve 
is number seven. And then total cost is uh, green bold line is total cost. So difference between sustainable total revenue and total costs uh, is what? This is profit, right? The maximum profit is where the biggest uh, gap between sustainable total revenue and total cost is the maximum profit. We say this is what? FMEY, FMEY. How can you get this one? Based on marginal revenue equal marginal cost, then we can get what? Profit maximum. So based on this condition, we can estimate the uh, piecing effort at the level of uh, maximum economic yield. And also, if you find this value, then we're going to substitute this FMUI into sustainable yield curve, then we can find the maximum economic yield productions. So get, definition is this kind of things. Maybe it's, uh, many of students is uh, many, many of students are complicated, what I'm saying. You just I just uh, uh, explain just voice. There is no blackboard. So if we have blackboard, then I can uh, draw something like that. I can solve something like that. Anyway, the concept is this one. So then, even though you don't know, it's no problem. Right? I just uh, give you some example to you. So let's see next time. So this is uh, empirical approaches. Uh, when I was in USA, this is uh, my uh, doctoral uh, thesis, one of them. So uh, at the time, I just uh, tried to uh, estimate the hair tear stock assessment by using multiple piercing gears. So my topic is a TAC assessment for single species and multiple fisheries. Why in the Korean countries, uh, we have uh, uh, complicated fisheries uh, structures. So uh, usually many of the fishing process catches uh, several species. So uh, many of the uh, fishing process catches by catches. Because of these reasons, when you estimate the uh, uh, stock level of a single species, we have to consider multiple fishing gear as, as well. So I try to do this one. This case is uh, health care fisheries. So I'm going to explain background on data model and analysis result and policy implications. So I just uh, before show this figure, right side, just see this one. Oh, sorry, what happens? Okay, so uh, first of all, background is we have to collect catch data, effort data, price data, cost data. And then I'm going to draw sustainable yield curve. Sustainable yield curve is uh, the right side, the economic area, the upper part, uh, parabolic curve. I mean, is that blue line curve is the sust sustainable yield curve. And then blue line is uh, same shape of blue line is a sustainable total revenue curve. Also, a red line is a total cost curve. And then if you see below, uh, dark blue line is annual uh, average revenue line, and also uh, sky blue line is marginal revenue, right? And also, if you see uh, uh, red parallel line is average cost rise. So we have to draw this one. Based on this draw, we can estimate it, the YMSY, YMUI, YOA, FMSY, FMUI, FOA. When you check in this figure, you can see where is FOA, where is FMSY, 
where is the FMEY? You can see that, and then where is the YMSY, YOA, YMEI? You can see that, right? So if you check a uh, vertical line, you can see it's YMSY, YOA, YMEI. And in the middle of a uh, uh, parallel line, you can see FMEY, FMSY, FOA lines, right? So final goal is this one. So then I'm going to show several approaches to estimate the maximum sustainable yield of a hair tail in fisheries in South Korea. There are three ways. One of two of them is just common models. First of all, uh, if you estimate the hair tail stock, uh, you just consider single species and single gears cases. This means that one fishing boat can catch is one species. Then uh, you cannot consider the other fishing boat catch the same species. We do not consider. This is a single species and single uh, gears cases. So if you see figures, single gears catch is a single species, but they exclude the other piecing gear is the same single species. They don't consider the, the other piecing gears catches the same species. This is a single gear and single species cases. And also second below line is what? All piecing gears catches one species, single species. At the times they're using piecing effort is just a representative piecing effort. This means that if we catch this macro, we have uh, several piecing gears. I mean that pair troll, gillet, auto trolls, or uh, the other things. However, uh, per, uh, per, per se, or person caught macro around 70% in the, your country, then I just use person's piecing effort, okay? So we just exclude the other's piecing effort. I mean that gillet or auto troll, large auto troll, or something like that, we didn't consider because uh, the representative piecing effort is a percent. Why person caught around 70% of macula. Then just they're using uh, representative piecing effort such as uh, well, percent picture. So they just using this one. They exclude the other piecing apparatus. So then finally they catches, they estimated MSY. Then uh, after we estimated MSY, then ev every country has their own ABC systems. ABC system is a lower bio catch, a lower uh, biological catches. So uh, my country also has this kind of approach. New Zealand also has this kind of, but USA also has uh, their own ABC uh, methods. So our country also our ABC methods. So uh, through this ABC method, and then they're gonna allocate the uh, individual, you know, uh, total all over catch pro individual uh, fisheries. Why? First of all, they're using all fishing gears, right? and then they estimated the MSY. Then by using production rate or production value rate, and then they allocated the uh, uh, total allowable catch for individual fisheries. This is a common model. But in my approach is alternative model. This model is a uh, uh, conservative kind of this one. I just uh, catch one species, by using multiple piecing gears. Then uh, I'm going to gonna find the standard is the piecing effort among multiple gears. Then I just change one new piecing effort levels by using standard is the piecing effort. Then after using standard is the piecing effort, then I just uh, uh, estimated MSY, then uh, through the ABC system, and then uh, based on production rate, 
or I uh, just uh, no 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 not production name based on change in uh, piercing effort uh, standardized piercing effort into their original piercing effort. Then uh, I'm going to find the total allowable catch for individual fisheries. This is a little bit different. So when I try to do standardize the piercing effort, if a statistic result is not good for all piercing gear, then I just uh, exclude uh, step by step. One piercing effort gonna exclude. And then I just try to, again, to estimate the standardized piercing effort. I try, try to several times. Then finally, if I get standardized piercing effort, then uh, when I using uh, a certain multiple piercing gears, then based on this multiple piercing gears, then I can estimate these individual piercing gears total allowable catch for macro. So I just try to do this one. So two of them is a common model. The other one is alternative model. So I'm going to show you. Before uh, I'm going to do this one, uh, why I try to do uh, this research. So this is very important, right? So first of all, to investigate it, if a certain species is our fish or not, we have to consider, right? So if uh, our biomass is not insufficient, then uh, we have to what? estimate it, uh, this stock level. Right now is uh, what? Over fish or under fish? So we don't know exactly what we have estimated this. So there are many ways to uh, enhance fishery resources, such as uh, marine ranching project, or fish release, artificial reef, or joint resource management among adjacent nations. Why? If you countries uh, enhance their fisheries resource, they have to prepares uh, several fishing regulations or fishing recovering plans or uh, they cooperated adjust the nation to improve fisheries resource. We have to consider several things, right? So uh, second thing is uh, 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 if a certain species is overfished or not, we have to estimate it. Then we can figure out, right? So if uh, uh, habit is already excessive. Excessive means the excessive means that uh, they catch overfishing. Then anyway, we have to estimate this. This is correct or not? So then, uh, in the real real situations, if excess harvest is detected, then what happens? We have to use a per survival program or rotation harvest or marine protect area. This is one of the solutions, right? So then what about? So right now, uh, some fisheries has uh, economy loss. Even though they try to catch species, but their profit is what? Minus. So what happens? Because uh, fishing power is what? Already what? Access. So we have to uh, consider how can we reconstruct fisheries uh, structures. Means that we have to re reduce the fisheries structures, or we have to uh, uh, distinguish uh, positive profit fisheries or negative profit fisheries, and then we have to uh, consider which fisheries should be what. Uh, exit in this fisheries area. So we have to diagonize this one as well. And also, uh, even though we are using total allowable catch systems, but uh, it is not enough only total allowable catch systems. Why? So total allowable catch is not 
uh, we say is 100% uh, good, uh, good uh, regulations. So if you recover some fisheries stock, we have to cooperate uh, input control system and output control system as well. So uh, we have to consider uh, improvement of fisheries management system or regulations. So we have those controls license system or permit system. While we are controlling total allowable catch system. So uh, in your cases, all of our uh, participants are related with the fisheries officials. When you see your fisheries regulations, you just consider balancing of fisheries management regulations. You need two of them. I mean, the input control system or, and also output control system as well. So if both system can be cooperated in your countries, then maybe your fisheries management is more improved, improved. Okay, so this is very important concept. And also, uh, if uh, your staff assessment is not uh, very good, I mean that underdeveloped. Then uh, my alternative approach is one of the solutions. So I just uh, explain it this. Way. Okay, what is hair tears? If you see this one, this is uh, our Korean hair tear. We have around the four uh, kinds of different hair tears, okay? And also hair tear usually uh, living in yellow sea. If you see our map, yellow sea, yellow sea. This is Korea and China and Japan. They're usually moving in the yellow sea area. We know that. And also, if you see right side below lines, uh, they, we know uh, uh, depending on season, uh, hair tail going to move uh, different places. And also, if you see our fishing uh, boat, usually pure total catches hair tail around 28%. Jigging is cutting by uh, jigging cutting is hair tail around 7.18%. Uh, Large percent catches hair tail around 7.17%. Uh, Long line catches hair tail is around 10.96%. Large auto trolls catches 17.8%, etc. So we can get this kind of information in our statistic office. Then uh, I just going to check uh, our country's uh, main pr fisheries productions. First, uh, main production is anchovy. Second production is uh, squid. Third production is uh, mackerel. First production is hair tail. So hair tail is very important uh, to South Korea. So then. Uh, right now, this hair tail uh, species is already depletable, overfished. So we have to find the conservative measures to improve uh, or to enhance our hair tail fisheries resources. And also, uh, hair tail is transboundary species. This means that this species is go through Chinese, Japan, and Korea, et cetera. So this means that even though our country can control very well, but Chinese government does not control the hair tail, then this hair tail stock can be affect our Korean hair tail stock. So in these cases, uh, transboundary species uh, is not easy to control uh, just one country. We have to cooperate each other. And also, people mentioned that uh, hair tail cut by petrol, auto tour, snow net, uh, stone net, long line, jigging, etc. This is some multiple gears cases. So, and also, our hair tail is not included in, in 
Korean total allowable catch system. So uh, if Delta is already overfished, then Korean government should consider uh, we have to uh, make TAC system of healthcare in Korean regulations. Okay, so we have to control this. This is a kind of a background. So then my observation is 16 years through 1989 through 2004. And I collect catch data and effort data. And also I collect market sale price, unit cost, and the rate of land value. This is a uh, rate of land value means that uh, lending price, okay? Producer price. So then I'm going to get all informations here. Then in my view, when I try to estimate the standardized piecing effort for uh, six piecing gears is not significant of a statistic. So I just uh, using two piecing gears. So those piecing gears catch health hairs around the 40, 60%. So I using two piecing gears, cut health hairs. Then I just using standardized the piecing effort for two piecing gears by using Gabriel's method, 1980. By using this equations, then we can estimate the standard is the piecing effort pro two piecing gears. Then uh, I'm going to uh, use effort averaging method to uh, get what? QKA, intrinsic gross rate, capability coefficient, carrying capacity by using effort averaging method. One of, this is also one of a surplus production method. And then, and also I'm using, uh, I'm going to define relationship between standard is piecing effort to CPU and also effort then. Maybe some of us already knew that. If this is linear, then we have to use what? Sheffer model or Snow model or what? Walters and Hilbert model. But uh, this relationship is what? Exponential, then we have to use the uh, effort averaging method or uh, what? Fox model or CIP model, right? So then if this relationship is exponential, then we have to use what? Converse gross function, right? Exponential gross function. So by using exponential gross function, then uh, we can finally get what? Sustainable yield curve. C, it means the sustainable yield curve. So then, Based on we, if we find the sustainable yield curve, then uh, by using Korean ABC system. Why Korean ABC system is looks like this one? I just briefly explained. We are using uh, Apple data and production data. Then our information tier is just a number pro. Then we say it's a number pro, right? Number pro tier is uh, we have a Korean ABC system is a number one through number five, uh, tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. If we have uh, more fishing information, then we have to use the number one, tier number one. Why? At the time, tier one, one is uh, involved in what? Age structure model. So at the time, we have to have what? Fishing species. Uh, maximum age, species maximum weight, or species fishing ground age, or species is maximum length, etc. If we have, we have more detailed information, then we can use age structure model, then uh, we have to use uh, tier one ABC. Just we have a fishing mortality, or uh, spawning uh, uh, grounding ears of a species or uh, maximum length or maximum rate, we have to have this kind of thing, then we can use what? Number three, why? Here number three, why? At the time we can use Beverton, Holt, Beverton Holt models. We also individual 
ages piercing mortality or uh, length of uh, maximum length or maximum weight of something individual age is this information that we have we can use uh, tier two tier two is a court analysis uh, however in in my approach is just we are using apple to end productions right catch and effort then just this information is uh, tier pro based on tier pro we can estimate the abc so tier pro procedure is uh, below number six <coughs> so alpha is greater than cpu divided by cpu msy less than one this is uh, uh, our tier pro number pro b is uh, is actually adapted to my approaches. So I just using this ABC systems. So then uh, we know that revenue is what? Price times sustainable yield minus total cost, right? The revenue T, T is uh, uh, this TC is a uh, what cost of times piercing effort, right? And the why is AM? Here's A is average unit cost of two gears, and also M is average rate of hair production value for two gears. Why I just using this M is uh, in the Korean. Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Time is very short, so I just gonna uh, speedily explain. It. M is very important because of why? In the clue and captain is there's property is different. If some captain catch a lot of species per day, then crew contributed a lot, right? So then cruise income gonna be increased depending on their uh, cuttings. So in Korean uh, crew income systems, captain has more property than crew can get more incomes. So in the cost area, we have to consider what? Fuel cost, income cost, or piecing instrument cost, et cetera. But cruise, Income cost is the high portion of a total cost. So depending on incomes, cruise income can be affect total cost. So I just using producing value over two gears. Why? Uh, here's cost is related with the production value. Production value is what? Production value means that production times price, right? So in the cost area, we just uh, involved in this M. So uh, in Korean, name is Chikarimje, uh, but it's not easy to explain. So anyway, this cruise income is related with the what? Production value. So we just use M into total cost. Okay, then uh, we have to separate the two of them, right? Total revenue, ABC, Percent total revenue ABC large auto truck. We have to separate the two of uh, the revenue. Then I just explain all empirical result. It is one of our standard is piercing effort, and I just make a log standard piercing effort. Then I can estimate the years uh, our QKA. And then if you know our QKA, then we have to consider the relationship between piercing effort and catch per limit effort. Then, if you see this one, linear is 0 point, RSK is 0 point 0.493, logarithm RSK is 0 point 0.547, exponential is 0 point 0.681. So, uh, we are using what? Bombers cross functions. We are trying to do this one. Then, finally, we can get F MSY and MSY. So by using what 
effort averaging method. And then this black curve line is sustainable yield curve. And then the maximum point is what? Maximum sustainable yield for two piercing gears catch what? Hair tears. And then you can get uh, piercing effort at the level of maximum sustainable yield. In the, this means that at the time we are using piercing effort is uh, horse. So how many screws net per day, something like that. So uh, per years, uh, large autotrol and pure troll uh, need to uh, use uh, 138,000 horse per year to get maximum sustainable yield around 31,000. 31,383 tons, okay? And we can find this one. And then finally, we can get maximum economic yield and maximum sustainable yield and also net revenue curve. We can get all of that here. So in the maximum economic yield is what? 65,715. Oh, sorry, uh, 65 million, 715,000 horse, right? So this is less than MSY. If I show that this MSY is what? T totally less than this one, right? It's less than this one. So then, however, our maximum economic yield is more greater than uh, the benefit of maximum sustainable yield. So then, we want to compare two piercing apples net benefits. More, uh, uh, which piercing buster is more efficient? If you see these lines, blue, green, bold line is uh, for net revenue petrol. And then green small dark line is uh, net revenue large auto troll. So pair total fishing effort proportion is 76% of health tears. Also, large auto trolls, uh, fishing effort pro proportion is 24% for health tears. And also, there's a net revenue is, uh, pair total is greater than large auto trolls. So efficient fishing effort is uh, pair total. Then, in our government, we have to reduce the large auto trolls piercing tools. Anyway, we have to increase our pair troll piercing tools. Why? There's economic benefit is more greater than large auto trolls benefit. So if you reconstruct the fisheries uh, industry in our countries, we have to reduce large auto troll process rather than pure troll process, because pure troll is more efficient to catch hair tears. We have to interpret this one. Then I'm going to explain in my implications. First of all, if you see this figure, if I mentioned that number one, number two is a common model. Number three, alternative one times two model is my model. If you compare the three of them, in our country's health care is already over PC. So we need to develop the conservative uh, assessment model to improve uh, health care's uh, stock level. So when I compare the three of them, then my alternative two times, one times two model is more conservative fishing uh, assessment tools. So, uh, when your country is, you are just using one by one piecing assessment tool, then you have to uh, uh, additively use uh, uh, the other methods, okay? So why? If you improve health stock level, then we need to conservative stock assessment tools. So in my alternative model is more conservative than the other common uh, stock assessment models. So I developed this one. 
And then, uh, second thing is, uh, when I checked our uh, hairtails ABC, our uh, uh, our total our hairtails stung level is already depletable, overfished. There's a point is where real point is uh, uh, one seven thirty comma six thirty four is a real fishing effort. But this is what overfished. We have to reduce the fishing effort. If you try to reduce the until ABC, we have to reduce the several one, right? So uh, our EMS, FMSO is uh, one, three, eight, three, uh, zero, zero, zero. But here, fishing effort is one, seven, three, point six, four, three. At least we have to reduce the 40,000 uh, horse. So, this is one of uh, our implications. So we have to reduce the fishing effort. We find found this result. Then what about here? In my case, I'm using fishing effort as horse, but we can transpose horse to we transpose a person into horse. So we can transfer how many percent can be reduced. We can count it then. Then if you reduce to until FMUI from real piercing effort, we have to re reduce the at least 113 ships. Okay. Petrol 65 ships, large total 48 ships. To what? to get fishing effort at the level of maximum economic yield. So we can count how many percent should be reduced. We can do that. And then uh, in our countries, healthcare is transboundary spaces. So I just give some implications. Even though we are trying to do use this conservative approach, but we have to what? cooperate to improve health care resource with Japan and uh, China. So I just give you some implications. So we need to what? Uh, we need to have a cooperative assessment sent among Japan, Korea, and North Korea, Russia, and uh, China, etc. So, so I just give one of the implications. Then, so this is my research limitations. So I mentioned the data I'm using 70 years time series data. And so I just use uh, two piecing gears, but rather than six piecing gears, and also. I just use a static result rather than dynamic result, etc. So I just give you this my limitation, and then uh, I finished. And then this is a, a, my final thing is this one. This is a, 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 a advanced or a top fisheries management or resource management, resource economics or. A, uh, applied economics, resource economics, or environment economics, or uh, department in USA or uh, Canada, etc. Website. One of uh, here is uh, you know University of Rhode Island. Maybe if I click this, maybe you can see that. So a little bit. So in my university is University of Rhode Island. So if uh, sorry, is not anyway. Anyway, okay. Can you maybe can you see here? Okay, here. Can you see? Can you see? I uh, cannot see. Okay. Okay, I'll try again. I'm sorry. Can you see? 
This is the uh, uh, University of Rhode Island. Oh, so this is Korean. Why? Try again. <laughs> Try again. English. Okay, so uh, can you see? This is the other, the other university, UC Davis. Here, UC Davis. And then before I mentioned the University of Rhode Island, maybe it's, if I click this, you can see that. Mm. Okay. Can you see? Okay. This is uh, nowadays Hiro Uchida is uh, Japanese uh, professors. So Uchida and Amy is uh, what? The hero's wife is Amy. Amy husband is Hero's. This, uh, you didn't know that, right? So this is the uh, chairman. And also other person, he's, she is my colleague. Simona is my colleague in, at the time so when I was uh, in USA, my colleague. So anyways, nowadays, uh, Universal Road uh, Island is strong point is water resource economics and fisheries resource economics. So if you are interested in this university, you can contact them, okay? So I just uh, briefly show this one. This is enough. And then I just give you this material to Marezo. I already have Marezo email then. If some of the students uh, uh, wants to have my materials, uh, uh, you have to contact Marezo, okay? So before I already get Marezo's email, then after my lecture and then, I'm going to give this uh, material to uh, Maris. Okay, so I'm going to finish it right now. I spent a little bit more time then I just give a point to uh, Maris. Okay. Maris, I can hear you. Maris, I can hear you. Okay, can you hear okay. my voice? Okay, okay. Okay. Mm. okay, thank you, Rob. And mm. also from the participant, we have the Rhode Island alu alumni, Rob. Mm. And the, uh, he, here is uh, Hario Topo Yono. Uh, he is graduate from uh, Rhode Island. Thank you so much uh, from Mr. Hario Topo already come to the in this class. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Nam Jong Oh, for uh, giving such an informative uh, and interesting lecture. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, 
uh, this lesson uh, should uh, get in one semester, uh, Prof. I think so. <laughs> we, don't, think so. we don't have enough time in only I two so. hours. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe next time, uh, Professor, uh, wanna share uh, this mm -hmm. lecture again in detail. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and Professor, uh, everyone, uh, we come to the question and answer session. Uh, I see from the chat box and email, uh, we already have two uh, uh, participants that already have question. Yeah. So maybe you can ask directly the professor uh, uh, pro from the from the participant. We have uh, Mr. Gigi. Pak Gigi boleh uh, nanya langsung atau Pak Diding. Uh, you can ask directly to professor. Oh, Mr. Haryo, you can ask uh, to professor. Maybe the first uh, occasion, for Mr. Haryo, you can ask directly to professor. Uh, you can introduce yourself first. Thank you, Mr. Marezu, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, good morning, Professor Nam Jong Oh. Uh, my name is Haryo. Yeah, I'm one of uh, the alumni of uh, uh, University of Rhode Island. I think I'm graduate in uh, graduated in 2017. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, is not too far from uh, right now. I just mm -hmm. only uh, four years from my graduate. So um, uh, one of my, I think it's very interesting to uh, to listen to your um, presentation, your, your topics. Although I think uh, because it's not my uh, my uh, my focus in uh, bioeconomics, so uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, hard to digest all of your uh, mm -hmm. graphic and some mm -hmm. sort of it and uh, but I w just want to uh, um, wondering to some of your respond about so what my consideration is uh, like for most of South Asia Southeast Asia country uh, obviously the challenge uh, on providing the uh, Fiscal assessment is about like the poor data that we have, and also the multi species mm -hmm. and multi fishery, multi fishing gears mm -hmm. uh, that we have. So, uh, I just wondering, do you have any uh, insight or idea to address this uh, situation? Uh, that's the first one, and I want to ask about the uh, the uh ideal periodic periodization uh on uh physics fish stock assessment uh maybe you can um you can uh, explain about the practice in korea it's like i i'm I just wondering but like is there once every year something like annual uh assessment or once in two years or something and and what is the ideal periodization actually for <laughs> conducting this stock assessment. And according to your experience and uh, maybe your expertise, uh, have you uh, ever find uh, an increasing MSY over time? You know, like, like in the year one, it gets, we have like 10 million and then in the next years or the next two years is increasing. Do you ever, uh, I just wondering, do you ever found this uh, case? Uh, I think that's my question. Thank you, Mr. Marizu. And thank you, Mr. Uh, Nam jong -ho. Okay, so would you please say the last questions I didn't exactly catch what you are saying. So I, I understand, understanding is that if we increase the MSOI, how can it deal with uh, some regulations or management, etc.? Uh, no, I mean, like, uh, I just wondering if you ever found a case of increased MSY. I mean, like, in your mm -hmm. career, maybe in 2017, you have like 10 million ton MSY, and in the next year or the next two years, it's become like 12 million. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, MSY, something like that. Mm -hmm. 
have you ever found i just wondering if you ever found that okay 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 i got okay. it yeah thank you okay so first of all one of the big problem is uh, how to collect data right this is very important so usually uh, east uh asia or uh, uh, south asia area is uh, maybe data is very poor so first of all your government or uh, Asia governments, they have to consider how do we uh, correct uh, more uh, precise data in the European. This is one of the uh, uh, big issue or important issues. What I'm understanding is that. So why I uh, mentioned about this so nowadays, uh, you know, WTO or uh, other international uh, institute or they usually consider subsidy, right? So we have to uh, consider things, uh, if we use uh, uh, prohibit subsidy, then maybe we have a lot of uh, trade obstacles uh, among your fisheries export or import, et cetera. So nowadays uh, FAO or uh, WTO are considering is the criteria point is MSY. So why is MSY is important? If your country give uh, some subsidy to your fisheries industry, you have to keep below the MSY, then we can lose your country's subsidy. This means that uh, nowadays, uh, uh, many of the uh, advanced countries considers how do we improve their uh, maximum sustainable yield in their country's stock. So if you estimate the MSY, then we have to have a, a good data uh, of your industry. So uh, you have to consider step-by-step. Step. So this is just the data infrastructures of fisheries industry. So maybe your government, uh, this data information correction is not a main area, right? So maybe it's uh, the other, important fisheries uh, uh, problems. First of all, they can, first of all, they can control those of them. Maybe it's data correction is not important. However, uh, over changing in times, so many of countries uh, considers uh, what kind of stock assessment tool you have in your countries. This is very important issues to cooperate what to uh, trade some fisheries uh, production among uh, world nations, then you have to keep uh, how can you estimate the MSY. So uh, more important thing is uh, how we have good data. So you have to consider also your government, top member of government uh, have to consider this kind of uh, uh, issues. So, uh, first of all, nowadays, maybe in our country, our 5G technology or ICT technology or BT technology is very improved. So, uh, we can collect big data. So, based on big data, so we can implement uh, several policy uh, decisions. So, this is uh, also uh, uh, some uh, economic benefits. So this means that reducing cost to uh, diagonize or to implement some regulations. Why? If you have a more good data, then we can get more good plans. So even though you spend uh, more time to collect data, this is not lose money. This is benefit. Uh, with uh, uh, over the time, maybe big data has more power to interpret it, your country's uh, fisheries situation. So, uh, so first of all, even though you don't have uh, good data, so you have to try to use, uh, how you have tried to, how can you get lending data 
and also how can you get effort to data is very important, right? So then um, maybe uh, your country already has uh, had the license system. Maybe your country knows number of license and also your country knows uh, uh, tons of individual uh, person per license, etc. So you have to correct step by step. And also annual data is very important. So usually pissing apple to and production data should be collect annual data, not biannual data. So you have to consider this one. So also uh, in our Korea, also we have we uh, invest several government money to uh, investigating Brussels to such as environment, changing environment or uh, changing climate and also changing water temperature and also changing uh, bioplast, et cetera. So several things we have to investigate by using uh, big investigating ships. So why we try to do this uh, nowadays, if you get more uh, good, policy decision, we have to know more precising data. So we have to invest the money to uh, information infrastructures. So uh, in our country also, we are using nowadays a bioeconomic model. However, so we are using a pebble holt model, quote analysis model, edge structure model, et cetera. Why? If you have more good data than if you have a more advanced assessment tools. So uh, step by step, we have uh, our government uh, invest the money to data analyzing or data uh, collecting. So even though maybe poor country is not easy to do this, so maybe this is not important in your country. Anyway, uh, if you have a uh, right now data, uh, office or statistic office then by using this statistic office, then uh, you able to uh, keep a push to government and then build up this information as well. So this is very important. The second thing is uh, before I already mentioned that uh, data correcting is very important and also data uh, duration also very important. Well, usually stock is uh, uh, usually one year cycles because we have a four seasons. So, so especially high grading species or uh, transboundary species is goes to the other nations and then after one year it goes into our countries, etc. So stock level is can be different is. Uh, depending on years. So our data also can correct uh, one year basis is very important. So then uh, I have to uh, give you good uh, information. Uh, first of all, so Korean government also implemented the total allowable catches uh, since uh, uh, 19, uh, uh, 1999. So, Almost uh, uh, our countries uh, implemented the TC systems around 24 or 23 years. But still, we are struggling, struggling to keep uh, exact MSY level to fishermen. Why? Uh, fisheries co cooperative also has uh, power, market powers. So usually they usually compete uh, MSY with the government officials. Why? If they get uh, less MSY, then there's benefit or there's production gonna be reduced. So because of these regions, uh, it is not easy to uh, near MSY data, MSY criteria uh, to fishermen. This is a big, obstacles. So anyways, uh, in our countries, uh, uh, over the 25 years, uh, even though we try to the uh, 
TAC system. If we didn't try to do TAC system, if we improve total uh, improve uh, resource, there is no solutions. Why? Because now this input control system is not working very well. Why? The fishing technology technology is uh, rapidly increased. So just one day enough us to catch is uh, many species. So uh, input control system is just uh, what uh, basic regulations. So before I mentioned that input control system, output control is both are important. Why we have to control the number of license as well. However, the important thing is output control system. So uh, now the Korean government still uh, extend TAC species. So uh, uh, some of the species MSY is improved, but some of the species is not improved. Why? Uh, those species is a transboundary species. Usually Chinese fishing boats catch a lot of species in near our country's area. Because of these reasons, uh, our government also uh, protect uh, uh, Chinese vessel into our uh, EEG. However, uh, many uh, Chinese vessel into the, our area of EEG because of these reasons, even though we are trying to do terror or lower catch system, their uh, effect is not very well. So, uh, so we have to cooperate with uh, uh, each other to improve uh, transboundary species. So what I'm understanding is that. This, anyway, uh, total allowable catch system is uh, more effective to improve uh, your MSY. What I'm understanding is that. Do you have uh, my answer is okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to ensure that. So in the Korea, yeah. the MSY is uh is I mean it's arranged by species. Right. Right. It's not yeah. okay. It's not, uh, because in Indonesia we uh, in M, uh, in our MSY we doing like the national MSY and national EAC basically uh, right now. Uh, so uh -huh. maybe yeah, mm -hmm. maybe we can we can improve in the next future for uh, to become like uh, space uh, by spacious uh, MSY. Uh, but yeah, uh, one of our consideration will be like, because it's multi-species in Indonesia, so many species in our fisheries is a, a little bit, uh, I think it's, uh, it's become our uh, huge challenge uh, to become, uh, to providing a, a by species, uh, MSY or TAC. But thank you very much for your response, Professor. Well, it's good, it's good. So uh, TAC system should be uh, uh, based on species space is very important. So even though our country also, we have a species and fishing gears, but uh, now that our goal is to go, uh, TAC should be uh, based on species is not Species and fishing gear, what is not uh, uh, species and uh, your country basis is not correct. So usually you have to consider uh, important thing is that when you try to do TAC, this is a basic criteria is only species is best way. Then even though uh, several fishing gears catches one species, but we have to estimate the all fishing gears MSY. And then finally, we have to have one species MSY is very important. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, Masario, thank you so much for the question. Uh, maybe we, we can uh, uh, get one uh, question again. From uh, Kam Ho, Kam Ho Tong Samut. Uh, Kam Ho Tong Samut, can you open your mic? Okay, okay. Uh, you can uh, introduce yourself uh, first, uh, and uh, then you can ask the question. Uh, thank you very much, professors, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kam Ho Tong Samut. I'm from Laos. Uh, I'm very interested about the. Uh, this method or this concept, but I 
I, I I wanted to ask because Lao is inland fisheries. So can 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 we apply for a bioeconomic concept in inland fisheries? Because it's uh, inland fishery, it's um, it's very small scale when when comparing marines. So mm -hmm. about economic fisheries for economic is very very less. Mm -hmm. Can we apply this this concept? Why Thank not? You. Why not? Because inland also we have a biomass in this inland. Yeah. So also we are using fishing tools. So if uh -huh. you have annual data, so time series data that you can use. So because okay. uh, 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 depending on inland fisheries, okay. uh, I mean the lake is very big, then this is uh, similar with the sea, so no problem. But small uh, land then, even though you didn't use stack assessment, you can count the dead then. You don't need mm -hmm. to do this one. Anyway, if your lake is very big, also yeah. it's not easy to detect all species in this uh, uh, lake then. We try to do this one. So, okay. no problem. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor. Okay, thank you so much for uh, the question from the uh, from Salaus. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, anyone have question? Okay, I will try uh, read the question from uh, Miss. Mr. Diding, Professor, uh, this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Diding asked about the uh, how many years of data series are required. This one, this one is my experience. Also, I get around forty years data when I do analysis. I did analysis uh, by economic. As you know, that one of the unique characteristic of tropical fisheries, such as in Indonesia, is multi multi species that uh, Mr. Hario uh, uh, talked before. And Indonesia will implement uh, a quota system. A quota system means uh, output, yeah, output control. Is there an appropriate uh, bioeconomic model for this fishery and how might it be applied in, in the context of policy implementation? Uh, this one, Professor. Yes, please, Rob. It's good questions. So people I mentioned in my lectures, if you have uh, at least a uh, 15 years time series data, then you can estimate it, uh, your MSY. However, if you have a more uh, long time series, then it's much better to get significant uh, result. So I mean that if you have uh, 30 years time series de data or 40 years time series data, then your data can be more significant. However, so even though just you have around 15 years data, then you can estimate it, your MSY. And also uh, in our Korean uh, fishery situation also, uh, just you are using uh, individual Brussels quota system without transferabilities. So you also implemented the TAC system. Also Korean government also implemented the individual quota system uh, without transferability. So it's not, you are exactly individual transferable quota system, ITQ system. Anyways, uh, uh, Iceland, also New Zealand, they are implementing individual transferable quota systems. So also Norway also implemented individual Brussels quota system without transferabilities. So why they didn't use uh, transferabilities? Because uh, this is, if you set up individual transferable uh, quota system, uh, government should give a property light to fishermen. So nowadays, many of the countries are using resources just to use right. There is no property lies. So those concepts is, uh, so compete government and the fishermen. So fishermen really wants to get property light of their quota, but government just to give it to use right to uh, fishermen. So then uh, they are compete each other. So Norway, uh, uh, Henderson proposed, they say, he said, if we try to do individual transferable quota system in our countries, we have to go long way to set up individual transferable quota system. Anyway, anyway, Norway, you are using, Norway using unique quota systems or maximum quota system, et cetera, to what? Throws this time to set up ITQ systems. I mean that 
uh, in the artisanal fishermen, they don't want to uh, implement ITQ system. So uh, Norway, they set the maximum uh, quota system. What is the maximum quota system? Uh, annually, uh, in the assessed uh, uh, artisanal fishermen, they can catch their historical catch as well. Even though they catch more, the historical catch is no problem. But just the government set up the maximum total catches in this area. Then they, they really want to detect uh, ineffective fishermen, just even though they have a fishing boat, but they didn't use. Then after three years or five years, then they just uh, distinguish it between activity fishermen and inactivity fishermen. And then just they uh, uh, profit in it, it ineffective fishermen uh, versus wakura. After then they reorganized the, the maximum uh, kura for these areas. Then they're going to use individual transferable kura system. So, this is one of the solution into Indonesia because uh, maybe Indonesia also is not easy to set up uh, individual transferable kara system because uh, uh, your country also multiple gears, multiple species cases. So you have to uh, set up first of all individual transferable kara system, individual KC uh, system. Then uh, if you uh, allocated the kara to fishermen, but they may be argues because initial uh, allocation is very difficult because every fisherman can get more initial colors. So how do we get initial color? First of all, we have to try to do maximum color system. And then just the government to set up the maximum levels. Then additional fishermen that catches there's a historical catch as well. After five years, after 10 years, then government can, can get correct data and then they are distinguished two of uh, uh, groups. Then one group just uh, profits their vessel, then it can be possible to use individual transferable color. Why? At that time, the government has 10 years uh, uh, historical fishing report to individual fishermen. So, even the government implemented the initial cura, maybe fishermen can agree government solutions. Why? Because they know there's historical level of cura. Government also knew that they can negotiate with each other. So first of all, so Norway, they are, they are trying maximum uh, cura system to go individual transferable cura system. The other way is a unique cura system. Why unique cura system? Because if some fisherman has uh, more fishing powers, he has uh, around 10 fishing buses, but he's just using five processes enough, but he just uh, has 10 buses. Why? He just uh, wanna sell more price of a buses to other fishermen. So he just keep five buses. So then government knew that this was. So then uh, government give to uh, cut up to fishermen 10, uh, government give uh, 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 there's cura to 10 buses cura. Then government negotiated the fishermen. This means that if you give five buses to me, then at least 20 years, I give you cura for 10 buses cura. Do you know what I mean? This means that Government really wants to reduce the person, right? Person by person buyback program, government need it. Then, if government uh, buy their fishing boat, government to pay lots of money. They need a lot of uh, budget, but it, it is not possible because their annual day set of budget, budget increasing just the point is one five percent or ten percent is uh, enough. But government really wants to more reduce the fishing buser. They just have another strategy. One of them is uh, you have a 10 buses. I gave you 10 buses cura, but you give it to me, five buses to me. Anyway, I give you 10 buses 
occur to at least for 20 years. Then fisherman can negotiate. Even though he has five bursar, he got 10 bursar scholars for 20 years. Then government buy five bursar to fishermen, cheap price. Okay? So then they're going to reduce the fishing bursar and then they're going to implement ITQ systems, something like that. So Norway tried to do this way. Anyways, Norway wants to not be compete fishermen and government. And they go to long way, but they go to ITQ system. So Indonesia also is not easy to directly use ITQ system. Our Korean also, even though we try to do around the 23 years old TC system, we cannot go directly individual transferable current system. Still we have a IBQ system without transferability. So it is not easy. Anyway, you have to try. First of all, you have to try TC system, and then you have to try individual CORA system in the, without transferability, and then you have to try individual transferable CORA system. So Iceland and Norway had uh, good models. So they're doing very well. Their uh, fisheries stock is very sound. So then, so we have to benchmark uh, Norway, Iceland, and New Zealand. So if you are interested in ITQ system, you have to check Norway and New Zealand, Iceland. So this country is very advanced uh, right now. OK? Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Mr. Reading, uh, uh, OK, yeah, Mr. Reading. Uh, Professor, I'm sorry, one last question from mm. the chat box we have uh, from Mr. Giki. Mm. Uh, this one that I will share. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the comprehensive explanation of this one. This one. Mm. He asked about the, the impact of global warming. The impact of global warming may have also have an impact on carrying capacity. Can mm. I explain it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, just uh, I'm using here's bioconning models is uh, catchy and uh, apple to data, right? So only we are using catch and apple to data, we have estimated the MSY. So this is, uh, we say is, everybody say this, this information is very lack. Why? Mm -hmm. right. Just we are using apple to data, catch data, how can he estimate the MSR? Because before we mentioned that the change in climate, climate change and water temperature is a changes and fishery stock structures, structures also changes or several ecosystem can be changes, global warming is a change, et cetera, right? So, so those information is anyway, involved in catches. Mm. You don't know, we cannot figure out. Do you know what I mean? So it means that catch information already included in all informations in the this. Even though we cannot figure out individually. So even though this is lump sum estimations, however, we can try to do this one because we don't have a more precise data. So if you have uh, this data, then we can estimate it as well, right? So the other yes. one is uh, one, if you try to do global warming or climate change, et cetera, we have to have more information, right? So then uh, we have to invest uh, scientific monitoring systems. So then, in the Korean government, we have uh, several uh, individual areas uh, point uh, uh, senses in the sea. We have uh, several things in the sea, point senses. So then every year we can guess in the point temperatures or, and also uh, seasonal temperatures, also uh, bacteria and also uh, some uh, uh, chemical informations, etc. 
you have uh, all information in the individual pointed on the seed. Mm -hmm. Based on this kind of a point, then we can correct all data and then we can figure out this year's water temperature is uh, just uh, one uh, point of zero point of five degree increase, etc. We can do that. We can know that. So uh, we have to spend lots of money to correct uh, uh, data by using scientific methodology. So uh, you have to consider this one. Also, if you know this information, then we can adopt where our bio stock assessment methods. So before I mentioned that, uh, I just mentioned that I'm economist, so I just using bioeconomic model, but uh, I'm also, when I was in USA, I took the fish population dynamics courses. So then people mentioned the quote analysis or the uh, Holton model as a structural model we needed. Right, right now, all, many of the uh, advanced methods is a Bayesian uh, approach to stock assessment, etc. So we have several uh, information, several stock assessment tools uh, depending on information. So we have a growing, uh, uh, global warming data, then we can adapt this information to uh, stock assessment tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting uh, discussion, Prof. But I'm sorry, uh, we do apologize that we have uh, to end this uh, question and answer session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, all participants, we have uh, 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 okay, we do apologize that we have to end this question and answer session. All present, we have a question, uh, please kindly ask to the professor uh, in the next uh, occasion. Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, do you have any comment to close this, uh, this class, Prof? Professor, do you have any comment? Oh, so anyway, thank you very much for mm -hmm. giving good opportunity to meet you. <laughs> so uh, I, I said one of the challenges to uh, cooperate with uh, each other is by using Zoom. So this mm -hmm. is a, one, one uh, challenge, but this uh, I think is very good. So also, if I didn't invite me, then I cannot see Marisa. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, thank you very much. Also, if you are interested in um, my courses or my things, uh, please feel free to ask to me. And also, you have to chance to come to Koika program in South Korea, then we can meet them. So maybe uh, nowadays, uh, a Koika program revealed. So uh, many new faculty member come into this uh, Koika program. So maybe it's uh, quality is more better than before. So if you have uh, more chance to come into uh, South Korea, uh, let's meet together. And also if you chance to trip, then please come to South Korea. Uh, maybe you can enjoy in Busan in maybe uh, Pugyeong National University is a very good place uh, in uh, uh, South Korea. So please come to my country. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Prof. We, we uh, love very much Korea yeah, and we miss uh, Korea and also your lecture, Prof. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we finally come to the end of this lecture. Before I close this uh, international class, I would like uh, to inform you if you like to watch this class again, uh, please visit uh, Suara Dari Laut YouTube channel. Uh, already, already I also record pro, uh, in the YouTube prop. The link I, I put in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Thank attending you. this international yeah. class. Good afternoon and have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very prop. much. Hey, enjoy. Marizo. See you next time. Uh, see you next time, bro. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.